Well, hi, hello, how are you? You have Julian here with Far Out Tiny Homes. Today we are talking tiny home parking. I know so many of you are looking in so many different places and while we have our other tiny parking home videos, you can check those out right here. More people want to see a state by state breakdown. So we're going to start with Oregon. Now, if you are like, darn it, I'm not in Oregon, let me know your state in the comments and I will start to do a deep dive. I spent days on creating this, uh, this list of places for you all to park and we're going to deep dive into them. So without further ado, let's go. All right, so the first place we are stopping is Portland, Oregon. And man, I was like, this is gonna be easy. I'm sure I can find so many parking places, but nay, nay, that is not the case. And so I really did do a deep dive and there are a few that I'm not even going to mention because I have already mentioned them in these videos right here and right here. So I will link those in the description. Go check them out after you watch this video. But let's talk about the new places I did find. The first place we're gonna to discuss today is called Columbia River RV Park. So let's get into it. So Columbia River RV Park, where are we? I'm gonna click on it, so here we go. So you can see where we're located on the map, see if that's an area you're interested in living, and let's head over to the website. The website is pretty easy to navigate, I'm saying sell myself, and what I love that they've done here is they did post their rates and they broke them down daily, weekly, and monthly. So you can see if this is within your budget. So fantastic, it talks about taxes and uh, basically all the information that you're going to need to know in order to get started here. Now I did call this specific community and they do accept tiny homes. So all the communities I'm going to mention today, I have already spoken with the management or the owner to verify that tiny homes are acceptable. Here's the situation with that. The tiny home must be certified. Now there's only one park that said it has to specifically be RVIA certified. And I will mention that when we get to that park. All the other communities, they just wanna see some sort of certification though. So this for you will probably look like a NOAA certification, PacWest certification, something like that. Okay, moving into reservations. So if you're looking for a single day stay, you can find all this information right here. It looks like you can also reserve a spot through camp spot. So that's pretty cool. So for their monthly rates at this specific community, they're looking at, um, you're looking at about 479 to 684 a month. That's gonna cover your water, <clears throat> excuse me, that's gonna cover your water, your sewer, your garbage, and then you are responsible for your electric. So if that's within budget, go ahead and check out the Columbia River RV Park. All right, moving on. So the next place we are heading is the Portland Fairview RV Park. You can see it's located right here on the map. So again, if this is an area that you are interested in living in, this is a nice little spot. Let's check out the website. So a little bit about the Portland Fairview RV Park. This is a, this is a nice community and they do want you to have the RVIA certification. So if that's something that you have and this looks like a good fit for you, then you are more than welcome to stay here. If you are thinking about maybe taking your tiny home to multiple different RV parks, this would be one uh, that you can stay at both long-term and short-term. Just make sure you have that RVIA certification. Now, well, this was a, um, while this is a really nice place, their amenities are fantastic. Here's the deal, you guys. This RV park is crazy. So this is a monthly rent at 827 to 835. So it's gonna include your water, your sewer, your garbage, 30 to 50 amp plug-in. Okay, so the same stuff that we've already discussed, plus you gotta pay your electric. So this, while the amenities are fantastic, and this looks like an extremely clean, nice park, it's really expensive. So just kind of keep that in mind that you will be paying more for this park. Um, here's the park layout. It seems so, so very clean. And honestly, when I did speak to the manager on site, they were so friendly and so welcoming of tiny homes. Just remember that you do have to have that RVIA certification. Okay, moving on. So as you can see, a lot of these in here I have called. I spoke to almost every single RV park <laughs> that I could find in the Portland area. The next place we're going is Park Rose RV, and you can see it's highlighted on the map. Here, I'll get out of it. 
there we go. Wait, there we go, Park Rose RV. Um, so this one is a little different as well. This is gonna run you about $700 a month plus electric plus water. So this was a new one that I hadn't seen before that they actually do have water meters. Um, and you also need to put down a $300 security deposit. So this community offers both short-term and long-term stays. Obviously the long-term stays, you will have to pay the security deposit. So let's check out the website. So when I did call, they answered immediately, which I will tell you a lot of these places do not answer immediately. I love that they have testimonials posted because RV parks can be really iffy. It's a lot of transient behavior. Um, they said they're an established RV park in North Portland, and then here's all of their information. So they have 20, 30, 50, and 120 amp hookups. So for those of us that have bigger electric loads, this would be a good place for you. They offer sewers, city, um, and then the accepting RV trailer sizes from 15 to 30 feet. So I just immediately am more attracted to this specific place because they have listed out all of their specifics right here. So for those of you doing research on some place to live in Portland, Park Rose RV looks great. They do say that their month to month rent is 600, but when I did speak to the manager, the price increased it. The price did increase to 700. Okay guys, I have one more place to show you and that is, oh my gosh, where is it? I had to go all over the place, all over the map, literally. So if I don't mention the RV park, one, because they didn't answer their phone, nor did they ever call me back, or two, they just don't accept RVs. So you're probably like, oh, there's way more places, like way more RV parks in Portland. Yeah, there are, but here are the deal. What, but why would I mention them unless they accept tiny homes? So now we're gonna go to the Cedar Shade Mobile Home Park. So this is a little bit of a caveat. So this place, here we go, so you can see where they're kind of located. They're all kind of, a lot of these that I speak about, that I have spoken about today are kind of all in the same area, which is nice. Um, the Cedar Shade mobile home park they they want to accept tiny homes she said they get calls all the time about tiny homes but for some reason because this is a mobile home park and not an RV park they are battling with the county and I want to say this is Multnomah County it could be Clackamas you I'm sure you guys will let me know I'm pretty sure this is Multnomah County um, they they are just pushing back on this mobile home park to get zoned to accept more RV parks. So here's my guess with that, is that if they do update their zoning to be more recreational vehicle permissible, you will probably need that RVIA certification. So just keep that in mind. If this community does look nice to you, then that's what you're going to be looking at. They don't have a website, but the woman that I spoke with was so, 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 so very helpful. So if you're interested, this one is called the Cedar Shade Mobile Home Park. And they are hoping that within, uh, the, by the end of the year, they'll have some different zoning and they can allow some tiny homes. Okay, so now we're headed off to Eugene. And for some reason, I, again, made the mistake that I would be able to find so much tiny home parking in Eugene, Oregon. I mean, these are, this is home of the hippie where tie-dye is still a fashion statement. And these are some folks, generally speaking, that live in the area that are pretty conscious about consumption and just living in general. So I figured, oh my gosh, there will probably be multiple places to park. Eugene is also home to one of the little tiny home communities where you buy into it and then it's on a permanent foundation. If you wanna learn more about that, watch this video here because I go into detail about this community. So I figured if they did it on a permanent foundation, there has to be somebody or multiple places allowing tiny homes nay nay my friends nay nay you guys okay so literally look at how many options there are throughout sprinkled out throughout Eugene and then getting into Springfield right and then getting into like the outskirts as well I figured that I would have so much luck okay no literally no you guys I'm like looking down my list okay so well I don't have I have three things to tell you here. The first one is called Idle Wheels Manufactured Housing. Let me find it here, right here. So that's where this is. Okay, so this is a manufactured home community off of Coburg. So it's, a, I mean, it's in a fine area and they charge 535 a month 
and then you have your water, sewer, garbage, and you just pay your electric rate. So pretty standard fare. They don't, to where I could find, have a website. Here's the deal with this community. This is not a for sure thing. This is going to be on a case by case basis. So, so you guys, you need to make sure you are asking the right questions, you're having the right conversation with the manager and telling them the correct information to more so talk them in, be persuasive about why you wanna live in this community, why your tiny home is beautiful. Because honestly, it looks like they have a lot of the old tin can trailers. And so a brand new, beautiful tiny home is gonna really make this community look nice. So I would just really suggest you download my Park It uh, document. I will link it in the description and that's gonna give you like preliminary questions to ask, make you sound really professional. It's gonna help you speak on the correct level about your tiny home and answer those really specific questions that these managers could bring to the table. So moving on. Lee's Mobile Home Park. Now I want to say he was down here too. Okay, so Lee's Mobile Home Park. So you guys can have an idea of where this is at. They look to not have a website as well. Okay, yeah, they don't have a website either. Um, they don't have, they currently don't have any vacancy, but they said maybe. And this is not, as far as they told me, this is not a 55 and older community. So this could be a potential place if you like where it's located, if you like the community, you can go and check it out. It looks like they have a mix of older trailers and some newer manufactured homes. And so I think a tiny home on wheels would be probably a welcomed home into this community just because they, generally speaking, are such beautiful homes. Uh, but again, no vacancy. So that, dudes, that wraps it up for Eugene. I was just blown away. So here's the deal. So you know Eugene's like redheaded stepsister is Springfield, right? And like Springfield for the longest time was just so run down and gross and cheap and like it wasn't the place to live. Well, let me tell you, Springfield is making a comeback. Not only do they have tons of awesome food now and cool places to hang out and drink and places to be social, but they are also home to the Springfield Mobile Home Park. So let's look at that. Okay, so while their ratings, it's only like a three-star review with 80 Google, Google ratings, that's kind of a bummer. It does look a little run down and it doesn't seem to have any sort of website. So it's older, right? But the woman that I spoke with, that's the manager of the grounds, super accepting to tiny homes. They have a tiny home in there right now, which is just fantastic. And they are so excited about welcoming more tiny homes. The only thing is, is they don't have any vacancies right now. So she did say they are gonna have some vacancies coming up within the next few months. The Springfield Mobile Home Park is a great place for you to go check out and see if this is somewhere where you would like to live. The last city we're gonna to visit today is my hometown where I grew up, a little place called Bend, Oregon, Central Oregon. Beautiful mountainous place to live and just kind of like Eugene, they have a lot of conscious-minded people living there. And not only is it home to some of the best beer, but places to park the tiny house is off the hook. I am so happy to report that Bend has multiple places. Now, what I will tell you a lot of the places that I did call, didn't answer, had to leave a message, and a lot of them didn't call me back. For the ones that answered the phone, thank you. Okay, let's get into it. So I called every single one on the list. Um, the first one we're gonna discuss today is this one right here, so you can see where it's located on the map. This is the Crown Villa RV Park. Now they do welcome long-term and short-term stays, so there will be transient behavior. So if you are a family living in a tiny home or you just don't like your neighbors on rotation, this might not be the best spot for you, but according to the manager that I spoke with, they do have different areas for short-term and long-term. Now, nice website. As you can see, they have a ton of information. Their amenities are fantastic. They really, really, really have a lot of great things going on, which they should, you guys. Seven to eight hundred dollars a month plus electric. I was not excited about that. So that was the only drawback where I was like, that's so cool that you guys accept tiny homes and they do need to have some sort of certification, but they don't have to be specifically RVIA certified. So that's fantastic. But 
seven to eight hundred bucks a month. Now I know renting in Bend is insane, and I know that rental prices are crazy. But here's the deal with seven to eight hundred dollars a month: is that most folks are going. Well, a lot of folks finance their tiny homes, so you have to weigh if you can afford the lot rent plus your tiny home um, mortgage. And a lot of them aren't structured like mortgages; they're more so structured like short-term loans and so the or personal loans and so these payback periods are very very small meaning that you have a big old bill every month due so just keep that in mind well the place looks great i definitely recommend it uh, they do have availability it just is expensive okay so moving on so one that i found that i didn't hear back from which i was totally bummed out was a place called the camp their website's pretty groovy um, they have fantastic, fantastic reviews. They do have some tiny homes listed on their website, uh, but they, they kind of suck at calling you back. So anyone at the camp or has experience with the camp, leave a comment below. Let us know more about your community. I would like to recommend it, but I just couldn't get a hold of anybody, nor did anybody call me back in a timely manner. So moving on. Uh, the next place we're going to is Scandia RV Park slash Scandia Village slash Ben Trailer Park. So this is actually pretty cool. So these three communities, the Scandia RV Park, Ben Trailer Park, and Scandia Village are all managed by the same company and they all accept tiny homes. You have to have it certified somehow, it does not have to be RVIA certified, but they do wanna see some sort of certification that lets them know that it was built correctly and built to some sort of code, mainly RV code. Um, they do want to make sure that your home is 2000 or newer. So they do have, uh, they, they want to see nice RVs and, and, you know, homes within their communities, which I totally understand. Plus the newer, the build, the more secure, the more safe it is. So I understand that they offer 30 to 50 amp hookup, which is standard fare for most tiny homes on wheels. Uh, the month to month rent was actually really great too. It starts at $425 and goes up to $700 a month plus electric. So you will have your water, sewer, and garbage paid for, which I was so excited to hear because in Bend, with the rent prices being just so nuts and with the other competition getting in that seven, eight hundred plus dollar a month mark, it is just insane. So you have three different communities to choose from. When I spoke to uh, the woman on the phone, she was so helpful and actually really, you could tell she was really interested in tiny homes. So it's not like they're just looking to fill spots. Like these people seem pretty awesome. So if you have had any interaction with any of these communities I've mentioned, please leave in the comments below low more importantly if you have had if you know of any other places that are welcoming tiny homes in Oregon again leave it in the comments below so it kind of seems like in Oregon for the time being most folks are leaning towards living in mobile home parks trailer parks and RV parks unless you have someone or know somebody that can stick you in their backyard but it is seeming like a lot of those folks get shut down. I hope that you found this information useful. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. We speak all things tiny uh, with a heavy emphasis on where to park. So if that's kind of your jam and you're trying to figure out what to do in the tiny home realm, this is a great place for you and we welcome all of our new subscribers. That is all I have for you today. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you so much for tuning in and as always, you know what to do, keep it groovy.